Hi there and welcome to Loopy Mabel's Closet. My name is Jane. Now in today's video I'm going to tidy up all my fabrics and I thought I would share the experience with you. So like I said earlier, I'm going to have a good tidy up. My fabrics are getting really unruly and um, I thought I'd show you what I'm going to do and how I'm going to tidy them up. Uh, before I go on, what am I wearing? Apart from my tape measure, which is constantly around my neck, um, I've got my Silene t-shirt on, one of my favourite t-shirts. just absolutely love this pattern. And um, yeah, everything else is ready to wear. We're talking of t-shirts, which this is a free pattern, which you can get. I'm going to do a little vlog on um, free t-shirts like similar to what I did with the free knicker patterns and um, do a little mini review of each one, sew one up and tell you what I think of them all. So stay tuned for that because we all like a free pattern. So let me just scoot around the room because it's starting to get a little bit messy and I hate working in mess. So obviously behind me you can see my machines, which is absolutely fine. But if I just bring you around to the corner, so as you can see, it's um, starting to get, just get a little bit unruly, a little bit messy. The fabrics are just plonked in. My pattern box is starting to overflow. So I'm gonna go through my pattern box, take out the smaller patterns that you can see at the front and have a separate box for the smaller patterns. And you can see them as well at the sides, just squashed in at the side um, and obviously because this is the corner where my chair is I thought I could um, put things that I don't use as much down the corner there and take out those boxes that I do use more so I can get at them easier so I've got all those fabrics there that are starting to look a little bit unruly and the thing is though when you plonk them on a shelf and you want to get maybe say I wanted to get that blue gingham one out that's at the bottom that well near the bottom on the top shelf there it put, just puts me off getting it out because it's like piled on top of all the other fabrics and it all falls off so I'm going to tidy them up so that's one section of fabrics I'm going to tidy up and then in this corner here I've got more fabrics surprise surprise and there on the bottom are all my double gauze fabrics from Material Girl Laura. In fact, a lot of these fabrics are from Material Girl Laura and they're all, um, I've got all the patterns ready to sew them all up. And I need to tidy that up because I wanna have a little section on one of these shelves where um, I've got my ready to sew type of patterns, ready, to, uh, the fabric's being laundered and the patterns are ready and they're all planned and I want to have a, s a separate cubby hole that's where I can put it so when I know I, when I come into my room I know they're the ones that I want to work on otherwise if I don't and things just get plonked again all over and these fabrics um, some of these are gifted from their Minerva, their Minerva fabrics so I need to put them on a separate Minerva shelf because obviously I blog for Minerva and these are fabrics that I bought, so I need to put them on another shelf. I've not planned what to do with, so that's going to go on the shelf that's not planned. And again, I've got more fabric. Again, they've got, they've got the patterns planned for all those there on the shelf. And then behind Mabel, I've got more wool. So I'm I need access because I, I, when I use the wool, I use it less frequently than the fabric because obviously when I design my crochet patterns, it probably takes me three to four weeks to, to from start to finish. So I'm only in, in, I choose the wool I want and then that's it for three to four weeks. Whereas fabric, I'm in and out of the fabric. So I want to move all that wool that you can see and put it somewhere where it isn't used or needed as much. And that hopefully should free up this unit more for my fabrics and if you're still after some fabrics I've still got uh, quite a bit left there on the top and if I scan around that cupboard there is full of fabric still and the one just behind Primrose in the corner that's full of fabrics too so I've still got quite a bit left but it is going down 
So what I was going to show you is how I, I'm going to, this is how I used to store it. And then I got lazy and then it ended just getting folded. So I'm going to redo it onto the cardboard like I used to do. Really simple. So let's just bring you back to my desk. And you don't have to, I mean, I've, I've got these cardboard, the sleeves that all the fabric comes on when I get them from my um, wholesalers. These are all the ones I used to have on the shop and I've, these are all the ones that everybody's all empty now. I've sold loads of fabric over on my Instagram account and there's not an awful lot of the quilting cottons left. If you still need some, I suggest you go over to Loopy Mabel Fabric. I'll put the link for it in the box below and you can see what's available. There's still some Clark and Clark, which I've just shown you. And there's a few, not many, quilting cottons left. So these are the empty cardboard um, sleeves. And I was going to throw them out, but I thought, no, I'll use them to store my fabrics on. But you don't have to use these if you don't have, obviously, these cardboard sleeves. This is another way I've stored my fabric on just bits of cardboard that I've cut up boxes and then um, this was for that length of fabric but you can just get your cardboard and make it for whatever length you want to store it on so you don't have to use this type of cardboard so what I've done is I've, beforehand I've measured the cubby holes and the cubby holes are approximately 13 inches wide so obviously I want to be able to get my fingers in either side. So I've cut these in half because I think they were 23 inches wide. So I've just cut them in half and um, that's big enough for me to store on my shelf. So I've done two already. I mean, it's not rocket science, but I'll just show you. And I just think because by doing it this way, you can, ha you can obviously have them sat on top of each other on your shelf. And obviously it keeps it neater. And you can hold, you know, grab hold of them a lot easier than if it was just fabric, it can go a little bit floppy. Or you can stand them up on your shelf that way too. So because this, the, those cubby holes are like a square, so the, the, they can stand upwards or I can have them lying flat. So there's one I've got cut ready. Basically, let's just take some some t-shirting fabric that I've got, which isn't very good quality. I won't be getting again. I should have learned my lesson from the last time I got that floral um, jersey, um, really cheap, but it's really cheap for a reason because it isn't all that great quality. And these ones I got are not that great quality. So I probably um, use them to make some vests or some basic t-shirts with but it's it's not brilliant but anyway I've learnt my lesson it's worth spending that little bit extra and getting a decent um, jersey fabric obviously I need to fold my fabric so it sits within the width of the cardboard so I'm just going to fold it until I get the width that I need And that's about right. The cardboard just hangs over the edge so I can, um, you know, get hold of it. And it just looks a lot better. And as opposed to, you know, you've got, you've got something to hold on to, sits better on the shelf as opposed to well, you know, it depends how far you want to go with storing your fabric. I, I, I just want to have a go at doing it this way. A little bit like Marie Kondo, how she folds the fabrics, which is a lot neater. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you don't have to do it this way. Maybe I'm going a little bit overboard, but I just think it keeps your fabric nice and neat and um, nice and neat and flat and easier to store. So I can store it upright or I can store it on top of each other. So I'm going to do a few more. So obviously I'll just speed up a little bit of the filming because you don't want to watch watch me doing it slow motion as such, but just gives you an idea of how tidy your fabrics can be. So 
so looking good so far much neater and obviously easier to get hold of and they can be stored obviously upright like on top of each other or this way up which is probably the best way because then you just can just take out what you need without having to lift them all up but either way works um, and I just like the way it looks reminds me of my haberdashery shop as well so I'm just going to continue with all the cardboard that I've got as best I can and then I'm going to tidy up those shelves uh, remove the wool and um, put the fabric there instead so I'm just going to keep on going I think that looks quite good like that nice and neat and then if I get really fussy or, or super organized I might then organize them into the types of fabric that they are so these ones here are all jersey um, this one is not sure what this is viscose then I've got some needle cord and I have got some twill I think it's canvas twill something like that see that's it I've got it and I don't even know what it is I'm sure it's canvas twill so I also really need to keep a note of when I get the fabrics what the composition is of the fabric and then at least when I do come to use it on how much I've got yeah I really should fill in my planner book just get it yeah on the back on the in your planner book you know for um, the pattern trace workbook in the middle section there's a planning section which I haven't used actually and um, there's a section there on your stash stash list so you can put the type the color the pattern and obviously how much is on there so then when you do come to use it you've got a, re a record of of it there so I really should start filling that in because I now going to have to remeasure these fabrics I think I've got a meter possibly two meters but again I'm not too sure so I'd, if I if I make a habit of filling it in as soon as I get my fabrics then I won't have to keep doing this all the time so yeah I'm going to do that too so that's something for me to remember and don't forget I've still got the cord uh, 10 percent discount code if you wanted any of the pattern trace products it's loopy mabel 10 and i'll put it in the in the information box below you can use it anytime as many times as you like it doesn't expire so on to back onto my fabrics so I don't, i'm not sure even sure what this is so what i'm going to do i think i'm going to put everything on its cardboard uh, insert and then when I've got everything tidied up, my room's all tidy, then get each fabric out, measure it, make a note of it, and then I know that's all been done then. I think I'll do it that way rather than me doing it, doing it now. So that looks a lot neater, doesn't it, that way? So if you haven't got any cardboard and you've never heard of Marie Kondo, she has a great way really simple way of folding your fabrics or folding your clothes in fact and i'll show you what i mean so i've got some gorgeous baby blush pink ponty that i bought from minerva so if i didn't have cardboard the idea is you fold it in obviously to a manageable width like so and then you like quarter it no you don't you fold it into three into thirds so you would fold it over once and then you would fold it over again and you just get a neat a neat way of folding your fabric so if you don't have the cardboard you could still fold it and it's really neat and obviously if you wanted to be really really fussy you could fold your fabrics so it's the same width for all of them and they all stack obviously 
easier on each other because if you have one this width and maybe one a thinner width and then a different width when they're stacked on top of each other they will start to get a little bit unruly or a bit uneven type of thing um, depends how far you want to go with your store and your fabrics you know um, or you could just basically just fold your fabrics as you get them and that's it put them on a shelf but Today I wanted to really have a, a good crack at my fabric, tidy them up, make a record of what I've got and um, maybe, as I said before, put them into compositions and then I can have a quick glance if I fancy doing some t-shirts, I can see at a glance what I've got in the t-shirt situation or maybe I wanted to do some uh, trousers, some cargo pants or something like that. You know, I can see straight away I've got some twill, I've got corduroy, or if I wanted to do, maybe do another cocoa, I've got some ponty. So, but that's another way of doing it if you don't have the cardboard. So I'll just carry on and um, see how far I get. So that's what I've managed to get folded so far. And I'm just gonna fold some like scraps that are not big enough to make anything with, but are perfect for, especially the jersey scraps, are they useful for gussets on my knickers because I'm into making my knickers now. Uh, also for cuffs or ribbon, you know, neck, bind it, neck bands, cuff bands, things like that. So obviously there's enough to do things like that. So obviously you don't want to throw it out. So I'm just going to neatly fold these ones. So I've just got leftover scraps. So this is obviously the scraps. This is obviously the scraps off my Silean t-shirt. I love this. This is cotton modal jersey. I got this from Material Girl Laura and just the quality is just beautiful. Got quite a bit, not enough to obviously make any more pants out of, but you know, there's lengths there that I could be turned into maybe a nice contrasting um, neckband or anything like that. So I'd be grudged to throw it out. So all I'm gonna do is stack it on top of each other as neatly as I can. Tuck in the off cuts and then just quarter, uh, I will say quarter, and then just fold it in three. And how neat is that? Now I have got enough to make some more pants with this or whatever. So again, I'll just fold it in half the neatest way. I'm not saying this is going to stay neat. But it's certainly going to stay neat for the next few days at least. And then every so often, have a good tidy up. I love a good tidy up. So, fairly tidy-ish. Cut hair as usual. And then I might make it a little bit narrower. and then fold it in to three. And is this that stack is gorgeous. And I can see when I put these on the shelf that I've got remnants of jerseys, good quality jerseys as well. Um, and so I've got them if I need them, as I say, to add a little touch of a color or contrast to a t-shirt, a vest, you know, around the neck band, the armbands, if I'm doing some vests, Gussets, like I said, for knickers, um, anything like that. And it's just a lovely way of storing it. So I've just about got all my fabrics stored, apart from the ones on the shelf there, because they are all uh, planned out for me to sew. And I really need to launder them, actually, because I don't think any of them have been laundered, so I may launder them. Um, so next I'm going to move all the wool 
and I shall show you. I'll scan you round. So at that section there, I'm going to move all that wool and move it over to that section there, probably more so towards the bottom, as I say, because I don't need access to it all the time. And then put have this whole unit, uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's eight cubby holes. And I'm just going to fill that with all my fabrics and my sewing patterns and then whatever I can't get in, I'll put over there and whatever wool or spaces are left after I've got my wool moved, I'll probably put all my books and other bits and bobs. So I better get on. So I'm almost tidied up. I'm quite pleased actually. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be and now I've got it all tidy. I'm hoping to keep it tidy. So I've still got my box to sort out, but I've found um, a little black box to put my paper patterns in. So I just need to sort through them. And I'm just putting all my like decent size remnants. This is that gorgeous fabric that I got from Felicity Fabrics to do my Ida blouse in. It's absolutely beautiful, Lady McElroy. And, um, there's a little bit left, obviously there's nothing, not enough to make a, an outfit with or a garment with, but there's lot, plenty left to do a pretty collar trim or maybe make some pretty bias binding or some nice pretty pockets on the inside of jeans or trousers. So and I'm just folding that length of scrap type of fabric up and putting them in uh, my little drawers, I'll show you. And again, I'm just folding it Marie Kondo style. I can see what it is in my drawer rather than it ending up in a heap in my scrap box. And I'm getting rid of the scrap box. I'm not going to use that scrap box anymore because it just ends up like a load of scrap in the box. Hence the word. So I'll show you my drawers. So that was my scrap box and it was just literally scraps, just full of scraps. Every time I finished with sewing something, I just throw it in that box. But it just used to end up in the box and never come out again. And it used to end up get all creased and just a mess. So now I've got my two little gorgeous Ikea drawers, pulley out drawers, which were full of rubbish before. And I've got the top one with um, remnants of jersey offcuts. Oops. So they're all neatly folded. And this drawer is all woven and it just looks much better. All neatly folded. And I can see at a glance now what I've got. I've got some, still, I've still got some leftover of my, um, try and pull this drawer out a bit more for you to see. So I've still got some leftover of that green, gorgeous green uh, baby card. And again, in the pale pink baby card. And then I've still got um, a remnant of that viscose linen that I did my Florence top in. And then these are just pretty cotton uh, remnants. There's my polka dot, again from Felicity Fabrics that I did my passion shirt in and a little bit of scrap there and the last bit of double gauze. And in fact, there is some white that I did my ruffle sleeve top in that um, viscose linen effect. So I'm gonna re-tidy that up. It hasn't folded very well, I haven't folded that very well. And pop it next to that white. I'm doing the single handed here. So now I've got those two together and I may have an off cut somewhere of the biscuit colour that I did my silo top in so whenever I find that maybe I don't because I can't seem to see any um, but if I did I'll pop that in with that too. So I'm going to put my Lady McElroy next to the green dotty. Uh, I'll do that in a minute because I'm, I'm using one hand here. So looking good so far so I've got two now off-cut drawers that I'm going to use every time I've finished cutting out and I've got a decent enough amount left. It's going to get folded Marie Kondo style, popped in here whether it's jersey, knit 
are woven in here and then I know it's there, it's tidy and if I need to line a pocket or make some bias, it's there. I can see it at a glance straight away then having to rifle through, oop, then having to rifle through this box that was a mess. So I've got a spare box now. So I've still got to work on this corner and I'm nearly there and now I've got some empty cubby holes still and then I've got these in the corner they're all planned for blouses and then I've got these up the top they're all Minerva Minerva makes so I've got all them planned so I can get on with them now and then the other bits and bobs are what I've bought for future projects and they're all going to go in the cubby holes I'm going to have a Minerva cubby hole then I'm going to have planned projects, cubby hole and then fabrics that I've bought and, and I want one for that and I want one for projects that I've got planned for YouTube vlogs and blog posts and hopefully I'll get it all in. Well that was a mission so it took much longer than I thought it would do but that's always the case whenever I do anything. Uh, so here is the finished, oops, so here is the finished tidy up of my fabric so over there it's all wool wool section and so my sewing books and obviously my sewing machines haven't changed and there's my little mini iron station which I use for ironing small things there's all my patterns on the top and then my paper patterns in the box below and then moving around to all my fabrics which I think looks brilliant so top left um, they're all ready to sew patterns are all there fabrics are all there top right they're all my Minerva makes so I really must get my finger out and get some of them made um, and then moving down below we've got we've got all the jerseys on this shelf here and there's two uh, double gauze just at the front but there are all my jerseys stacked upright so I know exactly what I've got. Jerseys and the pale pink one is the ponte at the end. I know exactly what I've got if I want to make any vests or t-shirts. And then below the next shelf I have got three more double gauze. Grey, that gorgeous green again and the dus dusky rose. They're all from Material Girl Laura, those um, double gauze. I absolutely love that fabric and I've got a few plans for them. And I've got a few plans for them and then next to that is um, my fabrics rolled up and behind there is some fabrics that are darker colours that I'm not going to even look at until the winter so they're behind there and then again on the shelf here are all my wovens and again there's some at the back and the ones at the back are all the corduroys I think I've got four corduroys obviously I won't be touching them till later on in the year and then show you my gorgeous tidied up remnant drawers which I think look brilliant. Never again will I have a messy box. So in the top drawer is all remnant jerseys, you know, big enough to do bits and bobs with, gussets or bindings or what have you. That's my leftover ponte from my La Paz jacket and that's a little bit leftover ponte from my Joan trousers. So a little bit left over there and in the bottom drawer are all my neatly folded wovens, cottons, polycottons, linens, a little bit of baby cord, a little leftover uh, stretch denim from my Jenny pants, some gorgeous um, linen that I did my Maria apron in and my leftover fabrics that I got from Felicity Fabrics. So they're all neatly stacked and I can see exactly what I've got. There's all like just remnants and everything else that was no good has now gone in the bin. I mean, ridiculous stuff scraps that I was never going to use really at the end of the day. Let's be realistic here. You, you know, you say you keep things, but you don't. And they end up all raggy and creased and, you know, it's just clutter. So now I'm all super, super tidy and back to a bit more organising. I'm really pleased. Took much longer than planned, but that's always the same. And uh, yeah, really pleased. So that's how from now on I'm going to store all my fabrics. Whenever I get my fabrics, they're going to get rolled up and put on the shelf straight away. And then I'll know exactly what I've got on my scrap box. So that was today's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I have got a lovely tidied fabric section and a lovely tidied wool section and I just feel a little bit more organised so all in a good day's work. It took longer than what I thought it would be but that's always the case with me. Um, hope you liked today's vlog, if you did thumbs up would be great and if you just found my channel please don't forget to subscribe that would be really good. Um, but yeah I've got lots more sewing to do and lots more vlogs planned so stay tuned for that but until the next time thanks for joining me today and if you've got messy fabric why not give it a little bit of a tidy up it makes you feel much better at the end of it I shall see you on the next vlog but until next time please take care and as always happy sewing or tidying up or whatever it is you're doing see you soon